Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've uh, best pressed this piece of fabric. So now it's not your average floppy. As you can see, it's got stiffness to it. The starch or the sizing in it is allowing me to uh, be able to cut it far more precisely than if it was just a wonky, uh, loose piece of fabric. The other reason why, and I use Mary Ellen's Best Press, uh, the other reason why I do this is because when we do uh, the embroidery, you've got something which they call, and we will talk about this in bigger detail on another video, but you have um, a pull uh, factor. So, <clears throat> for example, in, in this one that we're doing right now, uh, uh, there is a laboured amount of stitching here in the bedspread which has a pull factor and when it stitches down it will try to wrinkle up the fabric so although we've got a lovely you know I'm going to show you in a minute we've got a nice um, background um, stabiliser but uh, if you best pressed it uh, so you've got the stiffness in the material is far less likely to pull so uh, again as I said with this video I am doing a 12 and a half inch um, square okay uh, it, it, uh, when it's finished it will be uh, I'm just lining it up so my dots are straight on the grain of the material so uh, when it's finished and all sewn in uh, obviously quarter of an inch can be taken up all round so it'll end up a 12, 12 inch square but we're going to start off with a 12 and a half inch square so I just lay in uh, if you are into quilting so that you know that you are going to be using certain uh, sizes oops I just moved that moving it back again Oop -deep. Uh, then it's, it, it is worth investing in say a 12 and a half and then the corresponding six and a half because if you want to do two squares around it you want six and a half uh, if, if you always work to uh, nine inch squares then you want a nine and a half inch square ruler if you always work to uh, eight inch squares then you want an eight and a half inch ruler uh, to have a square, what they call a square at ruler like this, is, is very beneficial because you. Yeah, we can show this on the lines, and I'm just going to cut that again because it wasn't quite as I say. Uh, it, it is very beneficial to you if you're working. Woo! Moved. If you're working in. Um, like uh, conformed sizes like 12 and a half which is going to end up 12 or 6 which is going to end up 6 and a half which is going to end up 6 to correspond yeah then these uh, square root rulers that give you exactly the size that you need are going to very much help you with your projects Okay, uh, I don't think people do much, well unless you're into micro uh, block making, then I don't think you need to get smaller than six and a half, but well, I, you could, yeah, you could use, say, say you were the nine and a half ruler, you could definitely use that to do an eight and a half inch block anyway, so, you know, you probably three, twelve and a half, six and a half, nine and a half uh that'll probably suit you yeah so anyway so there's my 12 and a half inch square pre-cut now to go into my um prepared hoop now i, I have prepared my hoop okay so there's my no-show mesh that i've put on with magnets all right uh, the next thing I need to do so I can centralise my fabric is, I hope you can see this still on the camera, I've got a lot on you now, is I'm just going to fold it in half and make a line. Of course, having best pressed it, it will give you a crisp line, 
and I'm just going to do that again okay fold it in half and finger press a line yeah it is a square so now <coughs> if you like that's my square of material and just to be doubly sure this is a friction pen which you iron out yeah so I can just draw well, not really well but I can just draw for my own benefit a centre cross okay now before I affix this to the fabric the next thing I want to do is affix the picture that we drew yeah so this is the picture that we printed out and this is how we align everything to being centralised so I want that crease of my centre line I want to make sure first of all I feel that I've got my fabric centred okay am I? do I? am I? yeah so my picture is going over the top of that and uh, but then can you see here's my centre line there's the centre line in the picture so although top to bottom it's centralised I'm picking it up and I'm moving it to be centralised on my actual fabric having done that I will take a bit of uh, pa painter's tape or what well, it is paper tape yeah to just then secure oh not quite right this side bringing it up just secure my picture to the fabric now the fabric is not laid down yet so this is the next stage now I know my picture is centered to my fabric okay by horizontal and vertical means and next thing I need to do is to put this under the needle to centralize the fabric before we do the next step all oh, right I'm looking at this and I'm hoping that this is showing uh, my computer and the screen okay so I've just brought over and uh, what I'm going to just do at the moment is this is loose this piece of paper attached to the fabric is loose this is my I could put some more on actually I've got more in here oh they're not the right size let's find some bigger ones uh, just to hold it nice and tight I can put some more uh, magnets on uh, so it holds the Ooh, there you um, get on there you right so it holds it a bit more firm uh, I've got my arm of my embroidery machine is, is at home so that makes it nice and easy for me to reach in through and she says <laughs> your famous last words isn't it that should make it easy for me to attach I hate it when I go around the back of the machine and do it so come on be nice just there there that's fixed in now on my hoop uh, so now I will just say and uh, can you oh, make sure this is coming out on video yeah at the bottom here I got open up a video file I put my USB in so I go to number two which is where I always put it in I pick up the embroidery file come down and I know I saved these under love lock so now I got some bonus suit let's open her up uh, there's one and that is a GR hoop that was a big one that we used last time so I'm coming down the scale and it's going to go oh on this hoop which is the 8 inch hoop 220 millimeters squared it's saying Sue Sonic Sue Bonnet bed that's the one I want to pick up now so there she, keep hands clear because now my machine will sort out the hoop So that's its central point. It's that it, it that's where it's put in my hoop as its central point to start this embroidery. However, ah, I'm not sure yet. I need to put this in now and 
trying to make sure that all things are equal and it is loose over the top nothing is stitched down again I will hand crank towards me and lay down my needle and as I'm doing it I am slightly yeah now you see I've hand cranked down right in the center of my crosshair uh, and so therefore this fabric now should be absolutely centered so I'm going to go from that and I'm going to bring I'll just say okay to that I'm just bringing my needle back up so it's not actually formulating a stitch oh and very carefully with that I've got my hand on here so it's not moving very carefully I'm going to just loosen those two uh, paper bits okay and having loosened them now uh, I am checking that this is straight on that line straight on that line and straight across the bottom so it's not skewed at all and then I might come down and yep double check it again okay but now I've got a loose paper so now I'm gonna put my hand on the fabric because I don't want the fabric to move while I gently pull away the picture all right so although that did not correspond doesn't matter this is where I'm going to do it so as we discussed last time but I don't think it came out very well on the camera up here you've got a, a arrow a, a square with an arrow in it so I'm going to press that and I'm going to go along to well the first one actually because I just want the outside I have uh, hooked up white uh, fabric uh, white thread because the first thing I'm going to do is the pillow I know that so I want that white so I'm going to press this one yeah and then I am gently going to hold the fabric while I press start which is going to do a tack line which is then going to tack my um, background fabric to my uh, underlay okay so or, or my stabilizer so I just can press start now and gently because I don't want to stop the program from working just make sure that as it goes along it's doing you can't probably can't see it because it's white on white but trust me it's doing it now that side this side's down I don't need to hold it anymore it can just do its own flipping thing okay right I can press um, uh, across on there exit out of that because that's just put me in the center now these lines I drew before I've now got a hot craft iron yeah and as I said to you that they were only just to help so now using a hot craft iron I don't want them to, to report underneath my fabric so before I even start I just get rid of those crosshairs that's good enough for me okay uh, the other thing that I mentioned last time uh, and a lot of my video didn't actually come out so I'm open this time you can see all my buttons at the top I got like a little flower and a big flower although that's the overall picture I can say from pressing that first thing it's going to do is the pillow in pink because that's a placement line but obviously as we know if it's a placement line then the colour we really want is the one underneath it which is the white which I've already got uh, put on so I'm just going to press start and off it will go and it will start stitching I got mine on slow I got it on 400 stitches per minute okay when I'm doing uh, well an awful lot of the work that I do I do tend to work 
slowly rather than at a gallop because it allows the material more time to understand what it's doing rather than uh, go at a gallop and end up with a bad result. Now here, okay, this is my bucket of pieces that I've already done. See the glue is on the back of that. So it's not completely white. I decided to do uh, my pillow. It's got like a little gold spot on it actually. So now I can place my pillow down on the placement line and make sure that it is entirely where I want it on the placement line and using my craft iron I do this in the hoop as I go yeah so I've just ironed down that first piece of fabric melted to glue so now that fabric is stuck to my back bit the next step I want to do, as we know, as we chose, if for you it may be satin, but for me it's blanket stitch. And now I can press start and off it will go and it will do the blanket stitch. I've chosen white, so it's going to do it in white. So that's my pillow down. Now according to my uh, computer, the next thing I'm going to do is lay down a lilac. Oh, I have actually got a lilac uh, fixed up. So let me just take that white out. I, well, I'm not going to use navy blue. So I am just wrapping up a navy blue that was already put on my colour tree. And finding the lilacs that I thought I was going to use, which is this one. And Prompt that on my tree, number three, bring it up through my tree. I, I'm showing you this because uh, some of you may not work with thread trees, but they are definitely worth having. Bring it down and put it through my uh, machine, ready to go up, change it to... Uh, thread, oh I missed it, a little sod, twice, I'm going to just move my needle by a titch, doesn't want to do it does it, why not? Now it's done it. You know, sometimes it's more finicky than others. So I am just uh, cutting a big tail off of that um, and coming out of threading mood, cutting a big tail off of that pillowy bit, uh, that, that purple thread. I could even uh, pull the thread back a bit. You know, people tell you not to do this, but I do do it. And go start, because the next thing I'm going to do is that satin stitch which is going to be the purple bit that we decided on top and bottom of this pillow so i'm just going to let that stitch out i'm not going to do all of this on camera but i i'm, I'm showing you uh just a few functions and then obviously you just follow through yeah And you can see by our tree here that after it's done the purples, the placement line for the brown. So the next thing I need to do is to introduce the brown, which is so it's going to do the bed bits. Okay. The machine just made a funny noise there, so I'm not sure what that meant. Keep this up, never trouble. I'm going to stop that there, stop, and I'm going to move my hoop forward 
and hopefully you'll be able to see what just happened. Uh, yeah, you can. So that did not so successfully. Yeah, can you see? That was not a successful sew out. So I'm just going to cut those wayward strands out of the way. But certainly the next thing I'm going to do, and this happens to everybody, is I'm going to take off my hoop. I know that that is fine coming through and I think I'm just going to look at what I got here. Yeah, I did think that my uh, bottom line thread was fine, but I'm just going to look at this. It doesn't look too bad and it's not stretched, so I'm not sure why that happened. Not sure, but that was not a good output. It's, it, you know, some people might think, well, that's good enough. I don't, so I am just gonna <clears throat> lift my foot so I can get back in, and I am just going to. reposition my hoop uh, I, this could be a needle problem it's now mis threaded through the needle so again I'm gonna go and re-thread it it's threaded up again not a problem so this could be a needle problem I have done quite a few projects using the same needle which is bad but uh, coming out of my thread and if I press this center button here it will show me it's ready to do the bottom line but i am going to go back and go uh to start the top line again because <laughs> i am not convinced that that was good so i'm gonna no that's probably where it started i'm gonna go i'm gonna use my up arrow there's where the white finished down arrow that's where the purple starts now i know that's correct so I'm just going to over stitch that Far better. No, it's not. Stop. No, it's not. I'm looking at it with a careful eye here and I'm bringing it forward and as you can see, I don't know why, but I've still got thread problems, right? So this is something I need to work out for myself at the moment, why that is happening. So I'm just going to let go of the hoop. Uh, I am going to uh, cut off any threads from the back of the hoop, yeah? And I am going to cut off the bottom line, everything, and then just tidying that up. And what I am going to do right now is say, well, I'm not putting my hoop back under until I sorted this problem. I feel it's probably a needle problem. So right now, I'm going to stop you and change my needle. As I thought, that was a needle problem because it so the last bit so I, I went back about 20 stitches or so to cover up the mark and then went forward by using your stitch counter on your, your thing now it shows you the bottom line uh, I really do feel I think that it was 
simply a needle problem. Now people they, uh, disregard needles very lightly. Oh well, it looks sharp to me. Well, it's not the point of the needle. It's the eye of the needle that can uh, make your needle not work properly. It's the eye of the needle that is the most important thing. And I had done a fair few projects and not changed my needle, so it was time. Uh, I, I buy needles in the batch of 100 at a time because I do go through them with projects. So I'm just going to set, set start and uh, continue now on the bottom line to do, hopefully, the bottom part without any further problem. If I'm wrong, it will it'll go wrong again, but I think it was an evil. Well, maybe not so much, but uh, I must say that that did stitch out much nicer. And I'm not sure why that reported badly. I'm just going to cut off that bad tail there. But it did very well until it got to about there. I'm not sure yet, and I'm just going to let this evolve and see what happens next. You know, it could be a bad thing, could be a good thing, I don't know. It doesn't look very good. The next thing down on here is my uh, pink placement line, but we know it's going to be followed by brown. So I'm just going to attach my brown to my tree. Hello, where's the end of the brown? And feed that through. And back <clears throat> the reason I use uh, an embroidery tree as such is because I oh stop no <laughs> you arsehole uh, is because uh, I use great big 500 uh, thousand meter spools rather than little ones that fit in there so I'm just gonna take that to uh, where it should be, I uh, just oh, let go of that just a moment. Yes, yeah, so that's now up and in there, threaded. Get rid of the tails and oh, I miss damn. One thing and another, is it? This sat not a bit behind it. Right, okay, so now it's in nice, but take my thing off of uh, and I'm just going to go back up to where the purple finished and back down to where the placement line for the brown starts so I know I'm right back in the next place I want to do, which will do my uh, applique line for uh, the wood coloured fabric that I'm using. So I'm just going to hit start on that. So this is the pink placement line, but obviously in our brown colour. Okay. And it's just going to dump off over there. Uh, so I will just pull up that dump stitch. It's ready to go on the next bit. And I'm lucky enough that I've got this like triangle thing. Uh, sorry the hoop sign i don't know whether you have it in your machine or not but that hoop sign allows me to bring my uh work forward so that i can pick up the piece that i want oh 
and I can see a little scratch line there I don't want so I can lay down my glued fabric uh, and marry it up to where I can feel it on the pillow and get it nicely in line with the placement stitch then <coughs> using my oh come on girls yeah using my craft iron then yeah not the glue and iron it down in place okay press start <coughs> and now it should do uh, well i'll press start twice because i moved the, the hoop and uh, now it should do the blanket stitch over the top of the bed Now it's going to come down and it's pink so that's a stop but we know uh, that the next thing is to do the base of the bed. dump that end thread off there and again I'm going to use my uh, ooh, wrong one use my hoop mark and bring it forward so that I can see what I'm doing this saves me having to take the hoop off every time and put it back again some machines have the facility and some don't so now this is my glued up uh, bedstead bottom which again I am literally laying in place and with my hot iron I um, just I go around the edges first to fix them okay and then just wand over the middle so I feel that that is uh, laid down where I want it and then I'll press start twice start once to get the hoop back where it was and start again so that it will sew from where it should and this is now laying down the blanket stitch so this is the mode in which we go we're literally following this line of colour now of what we want it to do uh, to film this but uh but i want you to stop it when we get to doing the stitching for the bed blanket the next thing now it's saying to me oh i want to put down the feet so i need to get rid of this brown and pick up my flesh color tone which on my tree is this one it's still there from last time so i'm just quickly gonna pop this on lock it so I can yep uh, just thread there okay so there's the thread and what color is that I might got the right one no do you know what I have just taken up that purple again my oh is that the right one no that's perfect 
do you know what? I don't have my flesh. It's not actually loaded. So the next thing is now, as we said, and I'm just going to pull that back a bit. So I don't like huge tails. And as you can see on the computer, it's going to do the leg. Press start, which is the placement line for the leg. And I can just, from here, I know I can just put the leg on the placement line, nicely on the placement line, get my hot iron and just go yay. You are going to stick there, so that's that bit then. Uh, and then press start, and it will go over and do the blanket stitch for that flesh tone. But I'd like you to notice because of what we did in previous. Uh, when we were digitizing I told it not to do the blanket stitch all the way around because it's being covered up by something else so you can see now it's partially uh, done the blanket stitch so we're at this point now and I'll press start because it's now going to do uh, the hand print the hand of what we're doing so that's the placement line oh it's, it's i'm gonna bring it forward because it went out of my view cut off that stray find uh, the hand again which is glued and i'm just gonna pop the hand down lining it up nicely within the stitches and using my iron just say, but uh, there you are. Get in there, ease down, and then I can press start, and it will do the uh, blanket stitch now around the hand. And it's going to stop now because that's the end of that colour. I'm just going to pull up while I can see it. A little bit of a loose end there. And take out that... Um, what's it? Uh, we're going to use now this purple fabric. And I'm just looking at it. It's probably good enough to go back to the lavender that I was already using. So I'm just going to pop that there for a minute and bring up that lavender again. And say, well, I need to put you back in lovely. So, you know, why change threads if you've got one that's good enough? Why do it? So, let's just pop him back in. I'm very lucky with my machine because it threads up so easily. She says. It threads up so easily that, uh, you know, why wouldn't you? So, that's another reason for buying a really good machine. So, come out of uh, loading mode. And it's a placement line, so press start, it's going to go and sew that placement line for the dress. You see that's cutting across the foot where we didn't need the stitch. It's just dumping it over there. Fine, so I can bring that up, cut that loose end, uh, put my girl's dress down, all of these are glued on the back as you know, so I need to get it nice and centred, nicely on my stitch line, yeah, yeah, absolutely, that's good, get my iron, go around the edge, iron it, iron it down, yeah, Around the edge. Yeah. And then say, well, a bit in the middle. But iron it down nicely on the edge. 
there we are so she's done now great press start again and now it's going to go into my blanket stitch for that edge yeah i don't think that's too too bad of a color choice to be honest with you that'll work for me No pink line but again the same uh, fabric core on it so press start because this is now the outline for the arm and that went and dumped it over there that's fine get rid of that bring up that loose end get rid of that and then I can which way round is she going she's going this way round isn't she yay so I'm matching it to this matching it to the stitch line again get my iron and iron it down okay iron that down and now I can press start and it'll do the applique the blanket stitch to hold down that arm Now the next thing it's asking me is for a jade peacock colour which I'm going to have to look for. Alright, so uh, I've just loaded the jade. Uh, can you see the top of my machine? Probably not. Uh, it, it This time it's in the well because it's only a small bobbin because I don't use an awful lot of jade. If I found I was going to use an awful lot of jade, I'd go and buy a big one. But at the moment, I'm just using a small one. So, uh, I've just loaded that up. As you can see on our main picture here, we're, we're going to do the outline of the hat as a placement. And then, this peacock, as it's called on here, it's a jade. Uh, after it's done the outline of the hat, it will immediately go over and start sewing the uh, stitching for the, for the bed cover because it's all in the same colour okay so let's start that here's my bit I'm going to lay down and that's just gone and dump that thread over there Applique does dump thread, okay? It, it just does. So now I can uh, marry up this item to my stitching. You know, you've got to be, you've got to have it all on the right angle because it should fit 100% perfectly, okay? So oops again I'm just go around the outside yeah my hot iron all right and then go across the middle I dropped something I just, oh a pair of scissors just a moment oh pick my scissors back up okay so now I can hit I'm so sorry. If we accidentally affected the light. Sorry about that. You alright now? Are we alright now? 
we all are still okay yeah so i can hit start and it's now going to do the uh, stitch i shouldn't do this really when it's running but i do uh to lay down <coughs> the blanket stitch for the hat As I said to you, because it's exactly the same colour on our output from our digitising, it's now going to go and do everything else I said is the same colour, yeah? Immediately. Now it's doing those three little uh, stars that we branched. And you see by branching them, it'll do them all in one go. And now it's going to start and do the blanket in The stitch format that we chose and I, I'd just like to point out to you at this time you'll notice there's no puckering none of the materials puckered okay and, and now we're doing quite a heavy layout of stitching this is going to be quite a heavy layout and I'm hoping that you will see at the end of this is still no puckering and that is because of the way you prepare your material in the first place. Obviously, you need to have a good stabiliser. This is a very good stabiliser. But also, preparing this top material with, um, I could say Aunt Bessie's, but they're, they're, they're potatoes, aren't they? <laughs> what's her name? Um, what's it called? Mary Ellen's Best Press. I've been prepared it with Mary Ellen's Best Press before we cut it to size. Giving it that stability, that's another layer of stability so that it will not pucker up. When I edit this video, I may take a section of this and speed it up because you don't need to sit and watch every second of it. Actually, what I might also do is uh, stop it right there and go, uh, I hope you can see this on my screen, and go into set, yeah? And blue is embroidery for me and I'm going to come down and I'm going to come down to uh, good language set roof and order. So crochet arch command dot thread cut three millimeters. Uh, hmm. I've lost it. Maximum speed setting. So I think you may be able to find that as well. And you can see I've got it set to 400. Well, I can go right up. Uh, you know, I can go faster and faster and faster. 800, I can go up to 1,000. But I think I'll just come to 600 and go OK. Yeah, so it's recalled that. And press start. I'm off out of it now, so press start. So now it's reporting I can go 600, yeah? And as you can see, the actual stitching has gone quite a bit faster. All right. There are times when you want it to slow stitch. And there are times when you think, well, actually, you know, my machine is running fine. It's, it's an everyday thread. It's running beautifully. So now I can up the speed and work in that manner.
So with all machines, there are, there are other options you can use. Uh, they come set at quite a high speed, but if you were using something like metallic or something like that, or a thread you were not that certain of, the slower your machine works, the better laid down a stitching you will have. Actually, I don't think that's a bad colour, I just picked that off the top of my head. But looking at it as it's laying down, that's not such a bad colour to correspond with the hat of the little girl, is it? It's quite good. video here because I don't know how much space I got left on this uh, this camera all right so I just finished off the turquoise I got a little thread here I can pull and cut uh, I don't know whether you can see it on camera but that has come out as quite a nice ribbed knitted effect which is what I wanted for my stitching I've now put in this pink which is going to be my hearts within a heart if you watched the way that we uh, started to digitize this I you know we decided I'm just gonna get I, I'm just feeling this and I can feel that this is not not glued not stuck so I'm just using my heat to really make sure that it's glued down okay and again I've dropped my scissors bear with me ooh, 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 ooh. Scissors. Uh, so now I'm ready to go and I'm going to press start uh, for the embroidery of the heart Uh, I think I think I'm right in saying that this was an embossed satin stitch that we made so it is a satin stitch so it'd be nice and shiny and very close but it's got that embossment to it which will give it shape definition the my machine although it was working wonderfully at 600% my machine actually understands that if it's doing something a little complicado it will slow itself down to give you your best stitch that it that it can do yeah uh, it, my machine is it is very intuitive Oh, that is giving me a, a wonderful result. I'm really happy with that. really like that you can't see it as probably as brightly as i can but um, that's fabulous you'll see it on camera in a minute so now the next thing you know on our program of doing things was the white okay uh so i'm just gonna plop in 
a bit of white that's already on my tree, ready to go. Take it. Oh, didn't want to go, did it? You little sod. That's better. Now it's taken up. Uh, get rid of that. Pull that out. That's the white on there. Uh, pull it back because I don't want long tail. I want it to catch, but I don't want too long a tail. Take it off of uh, blackout or oh, 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 yeah, lock. Right now it's ready to go. Say start, and it's going to do the white band across the hat. It's going quite fast now because obviously my machine just decided oh this is an easy stitch not very complicated at all so it's going quite fast So oh, looking at it, what we've got left to do after this band has finished uh, plonking out, we've just got the teddy bear and his facial features. So we're going to go back to the same brown that I used around the bed because uh, I, I, I decided I didn't like the really dark brown. I could have used a really dark brown, but I decided, nah, to be honest, teddy bears are more uh, lovable, more a lighter colour and more lovable than that. So I'm going to go back to the original brown. As I say, when you do embroidery or you do a plique like this, it's not uh, it's not a competition to see how many uh, different colours you can use. Actually, it's more of a competition to say, well, will my original five or six colours actually work for me and lessen my lessen uh, the threads that I'm actually using, which, but in the same vein, then pulls the picture more together. Because if they are, uh, thank you, if they are uh, correlated colours, so that you, you've used the colour more than once, then uh, you're pulling the whole thing together, yeah? Where's that brown? Yo, yes! i got a long tail on it, that's fine. So I'm just going to plop the brown on now, thank you. Lock it out. Attach it, thank you very much. Get rid of the bit I don't want. Pull out what I do want, that's lovely. Pull it back a bit because I don't want it to go nuts. There we go, and we're ready. Unlock it and go start. I bet there's a lot of people that wish that they could uh, spread their machine as quickly as that. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? really hoping that this video lasts long enough uh, on this um, camera that you can see the outcome of this. I really hope so. It's doing uh, what you would call underlay at the moment. So it's just laying down stitches that the top stitches can adhere to or stabilizing the top stitching so that's like a very weak open weave uh, but it, it, it does give depth and stability to the top stitching that will go on above it okay there are some times when we don't want this underlay stitching uh, but that's something else to discuss and, and when, when and why we don't need it is another thing.
So this is my lovely little texturized teddy bear so out. Some might say, well, it's not enough of a contrast to the bed. But I don't know, I think it's just cool to hold it together because it is obvious it is a rugby teddy bear at the end of the day. And as you see, from a different angle, though that uh, stitching will shine, whereas obviously the fabric is matte. Okay, so yeah, I think it will do. And obviously the next thing I need to do, as soon as it's finished this, is to stick in the black. Oh yeah, I've got the black on. Where's the black? Hello? Where's my black? I can have to stand up and find it when this is finished. Yeah, you finished. Okay, let me just stand up and get me black. Uh, now what, what do I need? Definitely don't need this blue. We weren't using blue. So let's wind that up and get rid of that. That's good. Uh, get the black and pop the black on there. Oops. Get the thread of black and bring it up through my stand, which is number six. Ooh, there you are. Come through, come down. Oh, just get rid of the brown. Do not need that? Go away, brown. We just pull that out of the way. Go away, brown. Don't want you. Bring the black down and again, under and down and through and through the top. Lock it out. Bring it down into my thing and press. Oh, just do it. Oh no, to lock off. Oh, just do it. There it is. Done. A lot of people complain about automatic threaders. Got to remember, this machine now is over seven years old. I did have to write off to America for a part because mine was playing up. But having done that, brilliant. Uh, no problems with it at all. I'm going to bring back my black because these are, these are tiny little things. I don't want too much to have to cut out at the end of the day. But... Uh, all we're doing now is two little tiny eyes and one little tiny mouth. It's not an awful lot at all. So I'm just going to go start, which did take the thread right through to the back. Uh, oh, it's, it's jumped over because it was such a little tiny space between one and the other. So I'll deal with that in a minute. It has cut it there and I'll go down. After, I'll, I'll show you when it's finished. Now it's just done the mouth. Okay. And now you'll see on this screen over here it says completed. So it's all done. So while I got this, I'll just get my uh, my tweezers out, right? And I'll just pick up any loose thread and cut it. That was for its mouth, didn't want that. And there is do you know what? It's such that there is a very, very fine line between one dot and another dot, but it's so fine, uh, I, if, I, if I cut it, I could end up with a thread sticking up, which would be too small for me to pick up and cut. So I'm actually going to leave it. I'm actually going to leave that. And you'll see on the photograph, it's n not a problem. All right. So it's completed. That's the end of it. Thank you very much. I've sewn it out and we'll come back to... What I do with it next in a minute. 